Hey, Bill Gagne here to coach you up on finishing your basement. And we're going to get into part two of how to do a basement floor plan using floorplanner.com. Now, this is not a paid promotion. I used this software maybe eight years ago when it was free, and it's still free to do one plan. And I thought it'd be a great thing to use for people trying to plan their basement. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed. I've got over 200 subscribers right now, which is awesome. But what's even better is... People are asking questions about how to finish their basement, which gets me super pumped so I can share what I know and lets me know people are listening and they want help. And that's the purpose of all of this. So thanks to all of you. Now, if you do find that this video helps you, do me a favor, thumbs up, a subscribe, just makes me feel good about things. And it gives you a chance to ask me some questions and we'll see if we can get you your basement finished. So let's dig into using the software. So we're gonna go to floorplanner.com, which is what we talked about. Now I've already set up an account. I don't think you need me to walk you through how to do an account. That's pretty simple. We're gonna do a floor plan of my basement. So I live in a bungalow, it's a big rectangle, not really complicated to do. If you live in a townhouse or a row house, it might be a little different. So we're gonna call this project my basement and we're gonna create the project. I tinkered with this a little bit before. I thought I was gonna do one where it's just like, hey, I'll do it from scratch like everybody else and We'll pretend like I've never done it and it turned out horrible. So I'm kind of redoing this. So we're gonna hit this screen and we're gonna say an empty plan. So now I'm gonna go here. Now I wanna start by drawing my walls. My basement is 24 feet by 38 feet. So I'm gonna hit draw wall and it gives me my wall thickness. I don't really wanna care about my wall height or raised from floor or any of that, but we're gonna do the exterior foundation. So typically your foundation is 10 inches thick. So I'm gonna go with that. And I'm gonna just gonna start drawing here out my, I'm gonna go my 38. So we'll get to that. And then I'm gonna draw my 24. And it'll kind of snap you to the guides here. And you'll see the little lines allows you to make a big square. Well, I definitely screwed that up. But you get to kind of make it square, okay. One of the great things is it shows you both your interior wall dimensions and exterior wall dimensions. We only really care about the interior. So let's move this a little bit to try to get our 38. So we're about 37 and 5 eighths. Okay, that's close. And we're gonna go a little bit down. We are 24 and a quarter. I'm good with that. So this is my overall basement. Now I'm gonna go back to my wall drawing tool here. I'm gonna make the interior wall dimensions. So those are four and a half. You're gonna use a three and a half inch stud, drywall half inch on both sides. So we're gonna do four and a half inch walls. I have a wall right down the middle, which is my load bearing wall. And I'm gonna snap that right in there. I'm gonna extend this over a little bit. I'm gonna click here. So now I've got that. So it shows if on my side here, the two sides what the width there's or the dimension is between these two. And you know, here I got 11 foot 11 and 11 foot eight. So you can move that a little bit if you wanna make it equidistant or whatever you need it to be. I now, I've kind of started my basement already. Most of it's finished. I got one room that's left to get done. Well, I mean, the all, others are all in various states of disrepair, but that's neither here nor there. We're here to talk about you and not me. Uh, one of the things, oh, well, one of the things I run into last time was it kind of messed me up with, it didn't allow me to make a room. So what we're doing here is splitting it with my load bearing wall. No, that didn't go where I wanted. I want it to be perfectly even. There you go. I'm going to add another wall. So let's go draw a wall. I have a little office over here that I built that my kids have since taken over. So it's now gonna be classified as a kid's room. And then I have a little utility space here. I've got the side of my stairwell over here. And then I've got a laundry room, utility room, and bathroom all in this corner. Why did it do that? Let's go back here. Can I escape that? Okay, there we go. 
So we're gonna draw our wall here. I got another wall right there. And I've got a wall here. So I can now wanna just connect these two, make sure everything's all connected so that my walls are sexy. Now, you can go in and label these rooms. So if you click on it once, it says unnamed room type. So this is my cardio room. So you wanna click house, it's the type of building. This is my sort of living room downstairs. We'll call this what used to be my office. Now it's the kids' room. They've taken that over. This is the utility room. So you can go down and click that. We'll just one click. I keep double clicking. It only needs one. This is a bathroom. This is another utility room. I have a water softener and a furnace. They're both in different rooms. And then I have some stairs coming down. So it gets a little tricky when you have to do stairs, but it's not that complicated. So I'm gonna find the stairs that represent my stairs and I'm gonna put them right here. Now you can rotate them. See, so you got a rotate tool. I'm gonna rotate those stairs and I'm gonna stick them to this wall. Now I'm gonna build the outside wall to those other stairs. Now there's that and it's got a little bit of a landing. So this turns up the stairs to my second floor. Click here to end the wall, extend that and connect. So this, now you, each wall is now a different section. So I can actually delete this because I have an opening there going down to my basement. And then this room, we're gonna call this room the new office. And where are we here? We're gonna slip down. Did I miss it? Home office, bang, there we go. And you can label these rooms now. So if I wanna to go to this tool up here, uh, that one, place a label. Okay, so this room is actually, it gets a little tricky here, I'm trying to get into that, there we go. This room is actually my laundry room. And you can then click and you can move this around. So that's my laundry room. And then I'm going to add one for my stairwell. You don't need that. It's a stairwell and I'm gonna click that. No, nope, I'm gonna drag it and I'm gonna move it right over here. So this is my stairwell. Now, if you look around, what are you missing here? We are missing doors. I'm gonna place some doors. As you can see, they got all these little labels here, little widgets. So I'm gonna put the doors where they go. I got a door there. Don't worry about the swings just yet because you can alter that after the fact. I'm gonna put these doors where they all are and then we are gonna come back later on right after and change them to where they go. So if you click on the door, it comes up with these little things here. So it can tell you, you can change which way the door swings. So that door swings in and it is a 32 inch door. So I can now change that to 32 inches and it changes it on my sheet. So here I'm gonna change my swing. It swings in, swings the other way because you always want your door to swing into the dead space. It goes there and then I'm gonna make this 32 inches because these lead to a utility room. And here in Ontario, 32 inches is building code for utility room doors. Now, because I have two, it kind of complicates it. This door swings out because of my furnace is right here. It doesn't really work. So I got to flip that over. There we go. This door is good. This door is a bathroom door and I've made it, it's, it's actually a 28 inch door. So we're going to do that, make that 28. We're going to make this bad boy here a 32. And then once we're done with the doors, we are going to add windows, which is another nice little thing to do. So now we've got all our doors and all the right swings. Oh, I got to change the swing here. Flip that inside. Excellent, 30 inch door. We got all our doors here. Let's add one more that I have at the top of the stairs. That leads into my basement from the side of the house. Hit that, we're gonna flip it. And it is a 36 inch door. 
I'm not really concerned with the heights here. I'm just trying to get a feel for the room. Now I have windows. So place windows. So we're just going to take like a slider window. So I have one here. I have one in my kids room. There's one in the office and then there's one in the bathroom. Now all my windows are 24 by 16. So 24 inches, 16 inches. That all shows up there so that I'm going to get more of an accurate layout, at least initially for my own just fun because you won't necessarily need this. This we're going to move over to here because we want them to line up as best they can. Usually when I'm going for permit with a basement, when we used to be able to do the drawings, they weren't so concerned about the exact wall location. They wanted to know the rooms and they needed to know sort of what was in those rooms. They needed heat runs, etc. So, and they need to calculate square footage. And this has a really interesting tool for square footage. So if you go up here and to this little icon here, it tells you the overall square footage right there of the active design. So this whole thing, and then it shows you room by room what they are. So if you need to calculate your flooring, it's going to tell you all in there. It can also help with drywall and so forth. Now we've got our rooms laid out. We've got our windows. We've got our doors. Another cool feature to this, and I, it doesn't really matter for me, but it's kind of funky to be able to do is you can put your flooring in. So here's the wood flooring. You can go all through. There's a few other options, carpet, stone, tile, wallpaper, outdoor materials are on, on there. So we're going to go in and we're just going to pick the flooring. We're going to do this flooring throughout. It's going to be in all the rooms except the laundry room and the utility rooms in the bathroom. So we'll click there. We'll get into that. You can also change the colors of your walls and stuff. There's a little 3D design. I don't know how useful that's going to be for you. So the laundry room here, I want to put tile. So let's go back here. Just a clicking maniac. So I hit here wood. I'm going to go to tile. I'm going to find something I like. Cool. We're going to do that. And then we're going to put the same thing in the bathroom. No, that's not where I was going. Material. Tile. Beautiful. So on that misclick I had earlier, we got fixtures here. So you can put your toilet in. So my toilet is right there. You can put your shower in. So I, my shower is right there. And then the other thing is my vanity. I don't have a very big vanity. This one isn't giving me a whole lot of options. Let's see, there's a scale, Ooh, that's fancy. So we'll just use this right here. No, that's not it, that's a fixture. What else can we use? Country Black Basics. We just need, oh, I didn't know this was here. You have laundry basket. Oh, let's put a laundry basket in the laundry room. Amazing. What else is on this? Shower. I just need a sink. How come I can't find a sink? Interesting. Anyhow. Let's, we'll find that later. So we got a toilet and a shower. I guess you could wash your hands in the shower. Who knows? You figured out your flooring. The square footage feature here is pretty cool. So if you wanted to order your flooring for these rooms, your living area, your home office, 156, your kids' rooms, 129, you add the waste. Typically, we add about 10% waste to our calculation. And that does a nice little feature for you. You can figure out how many doors you need to order to hang and the sizes that can guide you through. You're going to calculate your drywall through this as well. And it'll help with paint. You can take this floor plan sometimes and take it to a supplier, say your local big box store, Home Depot, Lowe's, Rona, wherever you are, and ask them to provide you a straight up material quote for your drawing. And because your drawing will have square footage on it, they'll be able to do that. 
We can click save, we're gonna save this. Now the question is, can we print? I'm looking for, what's this? Show grid, show symbols. You can do a 3D version here. So if you click 3D, it's gonna walk you, it's gonna take you through your rooms. You can do the wall color and stuff. Oh look, I made the windows a little too close to the ground. So you can see your shower there, you can see your toilet, see your little laundry basket, the stairs. Pretty funky little drawing here, our shower fixture in the middle of nowhere. Let's go back to our 2D. As you can see, really, really simple click and drag format with all the things you're gonna need for your basic elements. I think you can actually add furniture in here. If you go to this button here, you can add furniture based on room. So, you know, you wanna put a couch in, you can just click the button. Here you go, there's your couch. I mean, they got all different kinds. You rotate it, bang, there's your couch. You wanna put a chair in there, you got a sectional. Let's put a sectional in the kids' room. That sounds great, bang. Whole bunch of funky little features with a little chair here. Let's put the chair. Terrible design on my part, but what are you gonna do? Lots of lots of little features that are free, and that's why I like it. I do not have a promotional code. Nobody is paying me for this. If I ever do get one, I will definitely put it in the description so everybody can take advantage of that, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to give a promotional code to somebody. Nobody watches. So, is there a way to print it? Export 2D image. There you go. So, big button in the. <laughs> and you can do it to scale. Amazing. So, top view, ratio, landscape, JPEG. You can do a PNG here, current design. And then we're going to export. Exports are in progress. The images will be sent to you within a few minutes. Amazing. So, as you can see, very simple click and drag software. They sent me a little JPEG of the drawing that I did and it sits on my little dashboard. And it's a great little software. It's free, no commitment. You're really only gonna do one design. You can delete and redo it. Just save yourself a lot of headache. Sure, there are other softwares that do a lot more, but do you really need to pay for it? If you want to, great, go ahead. I use another one called Punch Design. I won't really do a drawing for that. I find this a lot simpler than say SketchUp or some of the other ones that I've used. So that's why I'm recommending it. As I said before, nobody's paying me to do this. And if somebody does eventually give me a code, I will definitely put it in the description. I hope this helps you. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe because I'm gonna be doing more of these as often as I can as life allows me to. And I'm gonna wish you good luck on your project. project. Thanks again.